as with any project you start, today we're going to start by simply adding a new folder. I'm going to use it on my desktop and call it Sonnet Project because that's the name of the project. You don't have to use your desktop, you can use it in your My Documents or wherever it's convenient with you. You can also call it whatever you want to call it. Um, we then go into Reaper and then, as always, we will go to File, um, Save Project, Project As and then find that particular folder and I'm just going to once again, keep it simple and call the project Sonic Project. Simples. You now then have to download the video that I will put on Teams for you. That will be in your downloads folder and then make sure that goes into this folder. Okay. So you have to open that up and then copy and paste. I've got the folder in a separate folder just now, the file in a separate folder just now. So I'm just copying and pasting across. But everything has to be in here. So your video the actual file and then all your audio stem files as well all have to be in the same folder you will then start to import from there using the easy option drag and drop okay so just now that's just a flat line there is no audio it's all visuals to access this you would have to go to view and video that will allow you to see the video and as you can see this is a, a classic sonic the hedgehog video with no audio your job is to find that audio So remember, when you want to view the video, you may find that it's been closed or you've lost it, just press video window, or it used to be video window, it's now called just video. Okay, so a uh, very important detail. Next step is to use a website called BFXR. Okay, so I'll put that extension um, somewhere for you to access on Content Library. What it's doing is creating a series of presets using 8-bit sound synthesis, um, quite dated sounding, quite 1980s type um, synth sounds, which are in keeping with the Sonic video game. So there, is a, there are a series of presets um, all made up for you. Each time you click on a preset, it will create a variant. So for instance, pick up coin, lots of different versions. I think I preferred the first one. Okay, so I'll use that in a second. You can see here there's lots of information. If you want to experiment with that, that's fine. But it's very complex. Okay, there's a lot of learning and this is beyond advanced higher to, to a certain extent. Um, so I wouldn't be worried about it. Um, so what it's doing is creating presets. You select the sound that you want and then export it as a WAV. That will then ask you where you want to save that. And we want to save it in, in the Sonic Project folder, which is quite convenient. We don't have to go through downloads. Um, so, Sonic Project, and then we're going to save in there, and it's called Pickup Coin. I think that's a good explanation for what it is. Uh, the next one I'm going to use is um, Explosion. I'm going to find a sound for, for Explosion. Okay, I'll just use the first one. Okay, so use that one. You can spend more time working out the, the, the most effective sound. Export WAV, remembers the folder, Explosion 2, happy with that name, save. Okay. Next step, you're going to take those sounds that you downloaded and you're just going to drag and drop them again to import them and then pick up coin there. Okay, use your scroll to zoom and zoom out. Your yellow line will be always be a center point. So if you zoom out a million miles, the cent will always zoom back in to the yellow line as your, your center point. Just now, as is often the case, the magnet is on. Turn that off so it doesn't snap. If it's on, it means you can't synchronize it properly. And that's the next step we actually have to do is get the synchronicity absolutely perfect. Okay, spend as much time as you need to to do that. So let's find where the first coin is. Um, and there it is about there. Okay, so it's giving you a rough idea. You still have to move it beyond this. It's actually quite close. So we're going to control and D to duplicate it. And these will have to be layered on top of each other because they're so close together. So I'll duplicate them three times to demonstrate that. It takes too long for that to actually happen. So you might want to consider using a, maybe a slightly quicker sound than I have used. I've used a, a longer dee da dum. It's a wee bit too long. Okay, it does the, the job. And then explosion. Okay. way too late. I'm just going to gradually <coughs> I 
me the space bar to help me with play. Just all your shortcuts. There are a list of shortcuts and help if you want to find them. A wee glitch there. Okay, so I'm quite happy with that. So synchronization is really important. You can go on and finish the project. It's only slightly longer than a minute. So put in more sounds. I would suggest that you would have maybe five or six different sounds that all describe the different movements that are going on. Things like explosions, jumping, boing sounds. There's, a, there's like a, a springboard. You might want something to represent that. I'm going to make my video a bit smaller. And the next thing I'm going to do is to add a backing track. So I've already done this. So um, the backing track I'm going to use is going to be 8-bit sound. 8-bit sound will sound like the same kind of 1980s synthetic sound that you would expect within a video game from this era. Okay, so I've taken a, a song and I've just put 8-bit at the end of it. You can take any song. Um, I've never found any song that's not on YouTube with this. Anything from, from old rock songs to more modern songs all tend to be in there. So the process you're familiar with, you just copy, paste, and then it'll give you that, and then you can then download it. So press download, and then it will appear in my downloads folder. So I'm just going to copy that, and remember, as I keep on saying, everything has to go in the parent folder. That's the Sonic Project folder. I'm then going to import that. Okay. Now you, dec you decide where you want that to be. Now the second last thing I'm going to say, um, before we go into render it, is the balance control. Okay. These are the levels of each of your tracks. The first one, it doesn't matter. So there's no audio for the Sonic project, for the, the Sonic video. The explosion, you might find it's too loud, so bring it down. It's not loud enough, put it up. But when you're putting it up, you can put it too loud to the extent that it will start to clip and it will go into the red. And sometimes actually it can also go into auto mute. Now let me demonstrate that. Okay, so the master has auto muted there. So bring that back down. You don't want this to go into red at all. So unmute both of these. Again, still too loud. So keep it within the confines of the green. If it peeks into if it peeks into the red, you're basically clipping the speakers, um, can damage the speakers, and also it doesn't sound as pleasant, so it begins to distort. So make sure you have a balance between your sounds. Um, this is a backing track, this is like a sound bed, so I would suggest it really is quite quiet in order for you to hear all your different sounds. Like your rings here, for example. Okay, the music's too, too quiet. Okay, so get, find, find that fine balance between something that's standing out too much. Nothing should be too obvious. Now the final step is I'm going to show you how to take the file and render it. Same process before you go to file and render, but quite different in the fact that we're actually rendering a video as well as an odd audio excerpt. Now I'm going to be very specific in the things I asked you to do here. So same as before, master project, entire project, that really changes. We will obviously go to the file name I'm going to call Sonic Project and I'll call it the final. And then the directory. So the directory should be the same location so in the Sonic Project project folder so we keep everything together. Here's a complicated thing. So in order for me to see it, if you want to submit your work, I would suggest that you use these specific settings here. Okay? So have a look at everything I've highlighted here and I'll explain it quite briefly. So the format is what it's saving to. So we're saving to uh, an MP4. And then we're also going to change the size of the screen. So you will by default be on keep source aspect ratio. Take that off and then change it to 320 to 240. That allows you to save essentially to a lower quality of video. We don't need high quality video here. I'm only interested in the sound and the sound is already as good as it, as good as it can be. Um, the next thing is frames per second. By default, you'll be on 30. Change that to 10. That means how many actual screenshots there are within a second. So it might seem a little bit stuttery, but again, it's irrelevant. It doesn't matter to you and I as long as I can see the work that you've done. And then finally, the video codec. Change that to 30%. That also 
degrades the quality of the image. Not an issue. You then press render one file. I've already done this, so overwrite across here, and that happens really quickly. If you have a higher quality image, higher quality video, it would take longer to do. So if you want to save that for your own purposes, you may want to change these settings. So I would suggest that you would upgrade, close that, render again, I would suggest that you upgrade and then change that to keep aspect ratio on, maintain that as 30, um, the JPEG should be 95%, and then if you save that, you get a far higher quality track, far higher quality video, but it will take longer to process and it won't be very easy to, to shift it around. If you're familiar with YouTube, you may want to upload it onto your YouTube channel and then tag me in, send me the, the URL for that, um, and I'm happy to, to mark it that way. But for just now, simply, if you could use the settings that I first prescribed, so it was 10 frames per second, M, um, the video, FM MPEG, the MP4, and then we went to keep source aspect ratio off, and then go back into it in 320 to 240. Okay, a lot of settings in there. It's not something we have to do very often, but because we're working remotely just now, um, it's important that I can see the work that you've done and provide some feedback for you. Okay, so that's the final step. Any questions, let me know.